Welcome to the Awakening Podcast Network. Get ready for an inspiring audio from this cutting-edge voice. You can find more podcasts at awakeningpodcasts.com. You want to go deeper? Get equipped to overcome and walk in God's purpose for your life at Awakening House of Prayer's online campus. You'll experience an online family, preaching, teaching, and prophetic impartation for victorious living. We have over a thousand members online hungry for what God is saying and doing in the earth. Visit ahop.online today and join our family. AHOP TV empowers believers with spirit-inspired messages and strategic equipping that accelerates your spiritual growth. You can subscribe to stream weekly content from Awakening House of Prayer, conferences, and other exclusive content to stir your hunger and encourage your heart. Visit us online at ahop.tv. Well, hello and welcome to Women on the Rise. My name is Michelle Burkett and I am the director of Patricia King's Women in Ministry Network. And this is <laughs> Patricia King. I'm so excited about, about your topic for this I, week. Because, I am too. Because you are a model for singleness. We are talking about the wonderful, joy-filled single life. Living and, single and joyful. And, yeah. and you actually model that really well. Oh, because thank you. You use, you know, every moment of your life to glorify Jesus and to produce fruit for his kingdom. It's wonderful. It's such a joy and I feel it's such a gift. And, you know, God gives us grace to live fully and completely in whatever our circumstance and whatever our situation, whatever, whatever it is that's in front of us, he gives us everything that we need to live there. Yeah. And it, what we do often is we're, we're looking at what I don't have and right. we allow a discontentment to set in. And what, what Jesus always says is look at what you do have and make right. the most out of everything that I'm exactly. giving you. Make every moment count. Make right? every moment count. You know, because, yeah. you know, I hear people say a lot of times, I just need to be married. I need to be married. And then honestly, I hear some married people say, I need to be single. Yeah, I need to be yeah, single. Yeah. Like there's like, we have to learn how to be content in whatever state mm-hmm. that we're in. Mm-hmm. and use each moment to the fullest. But I want to bring up something and get your thoughts on it, because mm-hmm. you mentioned it in the green room before we came out, about oftentimes there's a stigma within the church. Mm-hmm. And you you were mentioning that a lot of times even church activities are centered around couples and families, mm-hmm. and that that when you mention that you're single, it's almost like people say, so, say that they're sorry for you in a way. They might not <laughs> say the words, but you feel it. Oh. Um, so, you know, oh, <laughs> yeah. you're not married yet right. or whatever. Right. And did you want to address that? Well, I think you just did actually really well. Um, but being single is not a handicap. Right. There you go. <laughs> Come on. And in fact, it's, it's actually very empowering in a lot of ways. And I, I would rather be single on fire for God and free and full of liberty to be able to do and go anywhere that he says to go than to have stepped into a marriage out of God's timing right. in order to fulfill something in me that has not been settled. Right. Um, or even just because it is almost an ex- it has been almost unexpected in the mm-hmm. church that what you do is you get married yep. and, you know, go be fruitful, multiply. Well, I absolutely agree. Yeah, I mean, be God fruitful, it, so, yeah. multiply. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that there is a, a demand that you marry. Right. So either way, it's yeah. a gift. And it is not a shameful thing to be single. Right. It is not. It is a glorious opportunity to live your life for God Mm -hmm. as a single woman and so many opportunities. And I understand that, you know, we were made for relationship, but um, I think Aaron, one of our guests that you'll introduce later, addresses it in such a beautiful way. But I just want to minister, you know, I can feel in my spirit that there's um, some of you that are just in anguish because Mm -hmm. you are not married yet. Mm -hmm. And I just speak a settling to that. Mm -hmm. And I was saying to you earlier that a lot of times when we reject what we're rejecting becomes more rejectable. Yeah. If you reject your mm-hmm. singleness, it'll become more rejectable to you. Mm-hmm. But when you accept someone or something, 
it becomes more acceptable to you. So when you choose to accept your singleness and embrace your singleness, it'll become more acceptable to you. And that might be a key, a big key for some of you. I remember one time I was um, in our uh, uh, a townhouse that we were living in at the time. I was so, I just, it was too small. It was too crowded. I had every complaint that you could imagine in my heart, but no way to move to a bigger place, no way to move at that time in our life at all. And so the place that we were living in became more rejectable to me. And God spoke that to me. That's when he spoke that word. He said, if you reject, it'll become more rejectable. If you accept, it'll become more acceptable. So I started praising God for the house that I lived in, thanking him for every single little right. thing about it. And it changed my attitude. As soon as it changed my attitude, I thought, this house is glorious. Mm -hmm. I love it. I loved living in it. And that was just mm -hmm. months later mm -hmm. that God actually gave me my dream home. Yes. I put it on a silver platter and handed it to me. Yes. But it wasn't until I was able to fully accept mm -hmm. and embrace what I have. And I, I believe that's a word for someone that's watching this. God wants you to accept mm -hmm. your singleness. And even though you might be called to be married, you don't know the time or the season mm -hmm. or the person yet. So in the meantime, accept your singleness and enjoy every moment of it. Amen. And again, you know, because you are single, it doesn't mean that you are rejected. Right. It doesn't mean that there is something rejectable about you. Exactly. It is, yeah. there's an acceptance that's always there that it, yeah. that's God. And he, he says, you're beautiful mm -hmm. and he's in relationship with you. And anytime that we allow our focus to be more on man, what man says, and I, and I say man, man, woman, right, sure. flesh, mankind. What, what they, mankind, thank you, says other than what God is saying about me, I've set my sights too low. Right. And when we cannot ever look to man or woman to bring definition yeah. to us, that has got to come from God. Yeah. And then what a gift that you do bring to that place of relationship. If it's a marriage relationship or friendships, whatever that is, when you have allowed yourself to be in that place of God defining you to you, you have things settled about who you are, mm -hmm. your character, your identity, and that you don't come needing, you come giving yeah. because you have it to offer. Yeah. You're not looking yeah, exactly. for something. Yeah, you're you're operating out of a full tank. Right? Yeah. And, and it's know, it's there's it's freedom acceptance. that's here. yeah, totally. And you know, so often too I see where because there is that need that it almost sets up a fear. And fear and love don't coexist. Right. And and so often what I've seen in counseling sessions is where there has been relationships that have actually been formed out of a place of fear. Yeah. I don't want to be alone yeah. or I don't know that these things common, about actually. it. Yeah. I don't know these things about me and I'm needing you to tell me these things. Mm -hmm. And so instead of there being the, the free flow of love based from two whole human beings, right. um, there's, there's the, relationship based on need, fear, and what if I don't get this? Right. And it sets up a whole dynamic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you cannot idolize marriage. Right. Marriage cannot be idolized. Right. And um, a lot of people who are married will say, yeah, you definitely cannot <laughs> idolize marriage, right? I praise God because I have had a beautiful marriage for 46 years at the time of this, yeah. this uh, re recording, and I'm so grateful um, to enjoy marriage. But I have many single uh, people in my life who enjoy singleness yes. and have a full single life. And in our network, we have a number of amazing single mm -hmm. women. And you're going to introduce Erin in a moment, who's like a scientist and has won awards. Very for all, accomplished. Kind of, very, yeah. very accomplished. Mm -hmm. And wow, you know, and I could say, wow, over many of our single yeah, women absolutely. in our network, they are awesome and, yeah. and really uh, living their life fulfilled in God. Agreed. And since you brought up Erin, let's just go ahead and introduce okay. Erin. And she is, she's a beautiful, accomplished woman who is absolutely filled with the love of God. I delight in Erin. You will too. Hi, Patricia King. Hello, Michelle Burkett. Thank you for having me on Women on the Rise. I love your topic this evening. It is the joy of singleness. For some people, joy and single, they wouldn't put them in the same sentence, but I would. I love what David said in Psalm 1611. He said, in the presence of the Lord, there is the fullness of joy. 
there's so much joy in God. (laughs) More than anything he ever created, he is joy. Joy is a person and his name is Jesus. And so whether you're married or single, joy is available to you. I love what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 7 when he was talking to the church at Corinth. He said to the unmarried and the widow, I wish that you were like me, that you would remain unmarried because you'll have all of these opportunities to be fully devoted to the Lord. You don't have all of these other things that are taking time away from your full devotion to Jesus. There are so many things that you can do as an unmarried person that maybe when you get married, you would have to sit aside or sit on the sidelines for a season. And so I encourage every person who is unmarried, don't waste your life, you know, sitting around begging God for a spouse, get busy doing kingdom stuff. I love that the word of God says, seek first the kingdom of God. In heaven, there is no marriage, not like here. The earthly marriage is a temporary thing. So at death, either of you or your spouse, that covenant ends. But the covenant with God is eternal. That means that heaven is all about God and ruling and reigning with Christ. And this time that we have on earth is preparation for what's to come. And so I encourage single people that I disciple to get busy running hard and fast after Jesus. If marriage is something that's on your heart, And it's something that God believes would be a blessing instead of, you know, a detriment to your destiny. Then running hard and fast after Jesus is the best thing that you could ever do. Why? Because if marriage is the source of identity, security, and you can't live without it, you're never going to be happy without a spouse, then you probably erected an idol. (laughs) And an idol is something that we find our identity in, our security from, that's not God. Idols can't save us. God gave us a picture with Jesus and the church of what marriage could be. It's a picture. It's supposed to be a picture where we get a lesson of love, faithfulness, mutual respect, and service, mutual service. It was never intended to be that the husband would be Jesus and the wife would be the church. Whenever we exalt the picture instead of get the meaning from the picture, it leads to devastation. Another thing that I want to say is that I believe that marriage is about mutual love and sacrifice and looking out for the best interest of another person. If you're full of lust and full of selfishness and seeking another person to find your identity, I don't believe that lust is cured by marriage nor selfishness any more than going to a bar cures alcoholism. I believe that those are heart conditions that God loves to heal so that if you do end up in a marriage relationship, you're adding value to the other person. There are so many people in history who have done amazing things for God and the world without a spouse. One of them that I love is Mother Teresa. She dedicated her life to loving the least, the last, and the last. Don't wait for God to send you someone to feel complete. Two incomplete people don't make a whole person. Two whole people make a whole person. And you can find wholeness in God. Anything that we try to use to fulfill a God-sized void or to find identity, it never fulfills us. But there's so much fulfillment in God. And we can live beyond content with just God. Whether you want to be married or you don't, there is fulfillment, joy, purpose, and identity in this man named Jesus. Thanks for having me. Bye. Oh, Aaron, thank you for being with us. So many good points that Aaron made, it Patricia. Was loaded with <laughs> it was. It was just wisdom point after wisdom point. Yeah. I just want to brag on Aaron. Yes. Um, I just am so blessed by her life, yes. what she stands for, the way she communicates the gospel, not only with words, but in deeds yes. and with a whole lot of love. And yeah. um, in our network, I mean, I just love going on the Facebook page because she is building up lives in the network constantly with just her nuggets of wisdom, her insights, her little devotional uh, notes. It's just awesome. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) She's a treasure. She is. And speaking of treasures, (laughs) you know, uh, again, God's already determined your worth Mm -hmm. and your worth is that you are a treasure to be treasured. And if, if 
if there has ever been any doubt about your worth or that you have felt less about yourself because you're not yet married and it feels like maybe something's wrong with you, in the name of Jesus, I lift that off of you today. And I, I cut through that in the spirit and I release the joy of his presence over you. The reality that you are never alone. He is with you no matter what and loves you with such a deep, deep adoration. Um, once you've tasted that, it, it, <laughs> it becomes a little difficult to find a man who matches that, yep. you know, um, and, but there is one, but there that is, that's, that's <laughs> the one yeah. that's, that's what I'm, that's what I mean is, yeah. is that love from him. Yeah. And every Christian is going to have a wedding day yeah. and it, and because he is our bridegroom He's and our there bridegroom. will be that wedding yeah. day. He is so amazing. <laughs> I'm just getting a word, Michelle, for some, some viewers that are watching, that you um, you thought God told you something mm. about someone who was going to be your husband, and it, it 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 didn't work out. It was like not only did they not become your husband in mm. one case, I see they actually married someone else, and you've been devastated inside. You've lost trust in yourself. But I mm. believe God's ministering to that right now. Just lift it off. You think how could I be so so wrong? How you know? I don't know how to reconcile it all. And one thing I do want to say is that this whole issue of marriage and discerning your spouse is very difficult because of the subjective place of the heart in it. Yeah. And sometimes there can just be hidden things that connect that feel like God speaking, that even the enemy can set up confirmation sort right. of thing. Yeah. I don't want to discourage any of you, but it is an area of such subjectivity that it makes it really difficult sometimes to know for sure that it is actually God speaking. So when God speaks or when you feel that God is speaking, things like that, just, just hold it lightly. Um, because I've seen it over and over yes. uh, so many times it's when devastating. people have said, this is the one God showed me, gave me five dreams and 10 visions. Yeah. And then it turned out to not be like that at all. And it, it's like, I think we have to hold those things lightly because yes. it's, such sometimes desperation even yes. in our hearts. So we have to be careful. Yes. I, I know of someone who I lost track of how many women I met who knew that God had said that they were supposed to marry him. And you know that God didn't say that to all of right. them, you know, and uh, I don't believe that he married any of those women that I had yeah. met that had right. heard that from God, right. you know, and it is, it's, it is difficult, but in all things, can, as you said, continue to put it on the altar. Yeah. And God is a good God and his heart for us is to give us every good yeah. thing. So we trust his timing. We trust that he's going to bring who needs to yes. come by our path exactly. and that he will help build and form that relationship there. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that we have to strive after. We make ourselves available. Yep. Um, I am not closed to being married. I, if God brings uh, the most amazing man, you know, in, in my path and, and gives me, lighting up and, right and, now. And, gives me <laughs> <laughs> and gives me a thunderbolt. Okay. You know, but I'm not, I'm not close to it. I just, I'm You're content, content. Yeah, because, because I have Jesus. Yeah. And I know there was a time I was going through such a difficult season and I remember it being just one of the only times that I've ever said, God, it would sure be easier if I had a husband right now, he could take care of all this and I could do this. And he said, I'm here, mm -hmm. you know? And so it, it just brought me back to a place yeah. of realignment of looking at who I do have and not at any so form good. of lack. So good. Our next guest is also in the network, and her name is Marquita Bachelor, which I find a funny last name for the topic that we're discussing. But um, she's written a book called Tearful Surrender and Joyful Release. And Marquita really has experienced different aspects of singleness. She was single into her 30s and then met her husband and... Uh, in four years, actually, her husband died. So then she's lived experiencing being a widow and the, and that form of singleness. And Marquita has just really got beautiful keys in how to live a life content in singleness.
Hello, Patricia, and hello, Michelle. And a special shout out to all the women on the rise. I'm Marquita Bachelor, and I'm excited to be able to share with you a few keys that helped me on my journey to living single joyfully. The first key to living single, I would say, is to know who you are in Christ. It is so important that we know who God created us to be. In Matthew 16, Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And he got several responses, and they were all incorrect. Only Peter had the correct response, and that was because it was revealed to him. People, if we let them, will try to define us based on our marital status. You're not married yet. You don't have a husband. And if you listen to the people, you'll, you'll feel like a, a second-class citizen. Only God knows what he created us to do, what he created us to be. And the Holy Spirit will reveal it to us, our purpose and our destiny. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we, and he loves us unconditionally. We're the apple of his eye. The second key I'd like to share is that it's important that we love and accept ourselves. Luke 10, 27 tells us we ought to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. I've met so many women who just don't love themselves. They don't like themselves. They're concerned about their skin tone and hair color and facial features, things that don't mean anything, but they tie their value and their worth to it. It is so important that we know the one thing that will never change, and that is we are made in his image and likeness. That's where we derive our worth, our value, our self-esteem. And add to that the knowledge that we're accepted in the beloved. I can testify, when I fully grasped this key, it was so illuminating and so powerful, it radically changed my life as a single woman. The third and final key I'd like to share is on contentment. Philippians 4.11 says, I learned to be content in whatever state I find myself. Contentment is a learned behavior. It doesn't come naturally and it doesn't come easily. I learned to be content in my early 30s, and I had to learn it again when I became a widow 11 days before my fifth wedding anniversary. You think about it, when Paul made that statement, he was in prison. I sense there may be some in prison today. Just with prison of self-esteem or low self-esteem or, or no self-esteem, a prison of others' expectations. Some people are prisoners as a single. You can be a prisoner of your own negative thoughts or negative words, a prisoner of others' expectations of you. God wants to release you today and to set you free, free to pursue purpose and free to pursue destiny. It is so important that you're free, that you understand your singleness is a blessing and it's not a curse. You have so many things you can take advantage of that married women just don't have the time to do. For instance, you can serve in ministry. The unmarried cares for the things of the Lord. It can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Travel, see the world, make new connections, make new friendships, start a business, write a book. The opportunities are endless, and you have the opportunity to choose what kind of life you want to live. I am a witness, and I strongly believe, and I can declare to you that first, you must discover your true identity. Second, love and accept yourself, that God loves you, and know that God loves you, and God accepts you. And third, learn to be content, and you will begin to live life to the fullest as a single woman. I pray that something I've said can inspire and and motivate and empower you to live your best life, to maximize your potential, and most of all, to live single joyfully, live with great pleasure and happiness. God bless you. And Michelle, Patricia, thank you again for having me on. Oh, thank you, Marquita. That was so well said. And, And in talking about living content, Let me also just offer a caution to you who are living single contentedly. Don't become so content that you become self-focused. Don't become, don't allow your world to become small in your singleness. Continue to reach out, continue to create a uh, family and relationships that are beyond your small sphere. Continue to make your world large because what is inside of you shouldn't be contained. Let it, let it flow. Let Let the relationships that you have with others also sharpen what 
your life, who you are. You know, one of the blessings of marriage, not everyone calls it that, but it is. One of the blessings of marriage is the relationship and the, and the sharpening of one another. And being single doesn't mean that you get away from that. God brings the relationships into your life because our relationships do continue to work on us. They allow things to come up in us that we can then take to the Lord and we can continue to have our character scrubbed, the who of who we are scrubbed, pass love tests. It's so good. Being in the kingdom is so good. You never lose. Love never loses. I have a decree to end our day today on our topic of living single joyfully. And it is. You are God's poetry. You are his beloved. You are the beautiful, cherished bride of Christ. You will live fulfilling the destiny that God has given you. For you are joined with Jesus, the anointed one. Your eyes will look with wonder at the depth of the, far, of the Father's marvelous love that he has lavished on you. He has chosen and made you his very own Your maker is your husband. His name is Yahweh, commander of the angel armies, and he will smother you with his kisses, his spirit kiss divine. Drink then in that sweetest wine. I so love you and I so love being single. (laughs) I so love those of you who are married and I pray that you will know the joy and the contentment of the place where you are right now in your life. God loves you with an everlasting love. This has been a production of the Awakening Podcast Network. Jennifer LeClaire is the founder and owner of APN. Our heart is to inspire people and exalt Jesus with every broadcast. We're grateful for our advertisers and supporters that make these podcasts possible.